What's up people, Lance Samosa here, the guy with the one tech mind and painfully obvious keyboard problem. But point aside, today we're taking a look at the brand new, just came out, Logitech MX Keys Mini for Mac. Now it's important to note, there are two versions of this keyboard. This one is the one labeled for Mac or essentially Apple devices. And there's another generic one. Now the major differences are that on the Mac one here, it has a different modifier key layout on the bottom left next to the space bar. And it also has a dedicated do not disturb button on the top right. Now the generic version has a dedicated forward delete button up here, which is nice too. Aside from that, functionally, they are pretty much identical. And uh, the generic one does work on Mac and Apple devices. It just doesn't have that optimized layout. So for 99 bucks, you get a very svelte keyboard with backlit keys that adjust to lighting changes in your area. The Mac version here does only come in this pale gray slash white color, but there are other colors available in the generic version of the keyboard. There's graphite, rose, and black. It has a built-in battery that charges via USB-C, so we'll add that to the laundry list of devices that have USB-C ahead of the iPhone. And Logitech says that it lasts about 10 days on a full charge battery with the backlight keys on. With the backlight off, they say it's supposed to last about five months. It supports up to three different connections using the uh, keys up here. You can switch between your connections at any time, along with the additional functions on top that we've uh, largely come to know and love. All right, let's open this up. It's uh, pretty simple. It actually comes with some wrapping paper, like the nice little gift it is for us uh, Mac folk or Apple folk. And there it is right there. And then the only other thing it comes with is a USB-C to USB-C cable. This one is uh, sort of a dark gray. So this is it. You know, it's uh, full plastic all the way around, but just by looking at it, you wouldn't think so. It looks like aluminum on the top here. It feels very, very solid and premium like I would come to expect of Logitech's devices, of course. You can easily just throw this into a bag like I've done and have no concerns. I mean, look at this thing. It's really solid. On the top edge here on the right side, we have the USB-C input for charging and a dedicated power switch. I just, I really love how thin it is, even with the battery built into the bump here, which gives you a nice little elevation to the keys. It sits at a a perfect angle, just, you know, a slight little tilt for you to type on. So I picked this up on my own dime because I was interested in having an external keyboard to use with my iPad mini here and my bigger iPad Pro, the 12.9 as well. But when I write scripts on my iPad, I prefer to use a portrait orientation. And I thought pairing these two devices together with a stand would be a really nice combination. It turns out it, it really is. I really, I'm really enjoying using it like that. So before I got this keyboard, I tried a few different Logitech boards, but the ones I tried were really disappointing. I tried the keys to go, which is incredibly thin, but the keys themselves feel like almost like nothing, like mush. And it actually slowed me down. There's no way I could, I could type at my regular speed on it. I also tried the Logitech K480, which is a very big and bulky keyboard that has a slot in it to hold your device. It's almost like just the whole bottom half of a laptop, which is kind of crazy. Uh, the keys were okay, but they still felt kind of odd. And it also didn't hold the iPad very well when I stuck it in there, either the, the big one or the mini. I also considered the K380, which is about the same size as this one, has similar functionality, but, and this is a huge but for me, it has round keys and I just, that is, I just, no, I just, I don't know what it is. I just can't do round keys. But that's just me. So if you can do round keys, you might want to take a look at the K380 because it is very similar and you'll save some money in the process. And then almost as if they were looking at my best buy returns and wondering what they were going to do, Logitech out of nowhere just comes out with this MX Keys Mini. Now, as you can see, the keys themselves are rounded squares or rectangles, but each key has a little circular divot inside of it. Like on the B here, you can see there's a circular indentation in each of the keys. And now this is opposed to their rounded keys, which are just completely round and come up. And I bought this sight unseen and I'm happy to report that the keys feel really great. I wasn't sure if I was gonna like it, but after typing on it for a week, they feel really great. The circular indentation here feels nice. It's unlike anything I felt on any other keyboard. There's more key travel here than on Apple's Magic Keyboard. So that is always welcome to somebody who types on mechanical keyboards all day. The typing experience is fantastic. It doesn't slow me down like the keys to go. 
Now, how's that for some quality ASMR? As I mentioned, the keys are backlit, which you can control manually via F4 and F5 here. So I'm gonna tap that and bring the backlight all the way up. And right now the keys are very visible. So no problem seeing these at night at all. But this is really cool. When I get my hands close to it and there's enough change in the lighting conditions, the keys will actually come back on. As you can see right there, I didn't even press the key on the keyboard. As for pairing the keyboard over Bluetooth, it really couldn't be any easier. When you turn it on the first time, it will be in pairing mode on the number one here, F1 assignment. Right now I'm gonna show you how to pair an additional device. So I'm gonna hold F2 for about three seconds and the light's gonna start flashing. And then I'm gonna turn on my iPad mini. Go to settings, Bluetooth, it's already there, and select MX Keys M Mac. Once I select that, it's gonna ask me to enter a pairing code on the keyboard itself, and then you have to hit the return key. Once you hit that, that will negotiate the pairing process and you are good to go. I'll type in on my iPad. That pairing process is identical for iOS devices. On the Mac, it's a little bit different. There's a couple more steps. I have to go to my Bluetooth preferences menu, find MX keys and Mac and hit connect. Enter the pairing code on the keyboard followed by return. And then I have to hit connect again. There's another connect button on the Mac I have to hit. So that's different than the iPad. If you do plan to use this keyboard to switch between multiple devices often, I found that the switching is actually pretty quick, which is nice. There's a, usually connects in about two seconds. So very, very little delay. As for battery life, I've only had it for about a week. So I haven't been able to fully see if it meets the 10 days with the backlight keys in use. Uh, or the five months without using backlight. And quite often I found that uh, the battery life typically lasts longer than the manufacturer specs. So I'm, you know, crossing my fingers and hoping that's the case here too. So this may sound like a glowing review and it largely is because it met my needs and my use case almost perfectly. Uh, but there are a couple things I will complain about. First of all, on the Mac version, there is no dedicated forward delete key. Uh, there is a dedicated do not disturb but it's not a huge deal breaker because I can hit function and the big delete key to do a forward delete. The other thing is the function up here was, it's really nice. It's got the volume controls, uh, playback, mute, screenshot, emoji. This one here is pretty cool. It, uh, you can hold that and dictate on your device. What's noticeably missing are keys to control the screen brightness on your connected device, which is a little bit annoying. My other complaint is price. You can get this keyboard for 99 bucks or you can get this same exact keyboard plus a numpad for 99 bucks. So on principle, I really disagree with the $99 price tag for this keyboard because it has less keys. And although you do get more portability out of it, you're not gaining anything else, any additional functionality than the bigger keyboard with more keys. But all things considered, this keyboard ended up being absolutely perfect for me. So I'm okay with handing over that 99 bucks. Logitech can keep it. So let me know you thought of this video down in the comments below, uh, what you think of this keyboard. If you're gonna pick up the MX Keys Mini, I'll put a link in the description. I've also got uh, planning and working on a, another iPad mini slash iPad video. I'm trying to build kind of like my ultimate mobile setup, including uh, this Sateki stand here. So let me know if you'd like to hear more about that one in the comments as well. So if you like this video, make sure you give it the old thumbs up, subscribe to help build the most obsessed community in tech and ring the bell so you don't miss anything else. And until next time, thanks for listening to my One Tech Mind.